Hello everyone and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host Rob Bentley and thanks for tuning in. On today's show we'll recap a busy home weekend for the Bulldogs as we check in with the Ferris State track and field along with men's tennis and Bulldog softball. We'll start first though with track and field joined by assistant coach Larry Levine. Coach first of all welcome to the show. Thanks a lot Rob. This past weekend I uh, had a chance to host the Bulldog Invitational and a busy day, uh, of course, uh, a great day for track and field fans uh, as you hosted your home meet here uh, in Big Rapids. Yes, yes, it takes a lot to put on a, uh, an outdoor track and field meet, but uh, um, it was a beautiful day. We got uh, you know, a lot of good marks, a lot of good performances out of it, um, and it was really a, a, a good chance for our athletes to know how to pace themselves through their events. Had a chance to open the, the season at the Michigan State Invitational uh, a few weeks before that. Uh, talk about how that uh, helped you prepare for this second outdoor meet of the season. Well, I certainly had to cope with the weather a little better out there. It was, uh, it was rainy and windy out there. Um, again, you know, coming from an indoor, a lot more controlled environment where, um, you know, the schedule kind of stays and, and it, it's a lot easier to, to plan what you have to do during the day. When you're standing around outside with, with wind and sun and stuff like that, you got to pay attention to your body and, and make sure you're ready to go. So last week was a good, uh, like a timing thing for us. So when we got, came in this week, um, you know, I think we had things a little bit more together as we're going along and, and hopefully that pans out through the rest of the season. Of course, hosting the track and field uh, meet takes, takes a lot of work, a lot of volunteers. Uh, talk about how that went and, and having those uh, people lined up to help with the meet. Yeah, well, you know, hosting the, uh, the GLIAC last year on our new track uh, helped us gather a, a group of officials that were uh, come in and, and, uh, and help us. So we had a good uh, database of that. Uh, of, uh, volunteers are always very uh, difficult to come from because they got to spend all day out there doing that. Um, so that's probably the best thing we got from, from the jump start we had last year. Um, I can't thank the administration enough for the things that they've done as far as arranging for things that we need, tents and food and stuff like that. So, um, you know, as, a, as an entire athletics department, we kind of come together to put, uh, put this event on. As we go to some of the highlights of the meet, uh, of course, uh, some great competition. Talk about some of the schools that were here competing against the Bulldogs. Well, we had uh, 14 schools, I believe, who came in here. Uh, there was another meet uh, scheduled for that day that was canceled, so we got a lot of, like, run over from, from some of those guys. Um, so we really weren't expecting to have that, that big a meet, and I think we coped pretty well. But we had Davenport, who's going to be uh, new to the conference soon. Um, uh, uh, we had some unattached athletes, uh, you know, probably about four or five different groups. We had a group of alumni throwers come out and throw. So. <laughs> Certainly a great opportunity uh, for your kids to compete in front of the home fans. Uh, yes. Only home meet of the year here for the Bulldogs. Yes, yes. And it's been a while since we've held it. So um, it was nice and uh, uh, had a great crowd. Um, of course, with 14 teams, you're going to get you know a, a lot of people there. And uh, the way it was scheduled out, uh, some of them got out to the throws area and stuff like that. So it, it was nice to have a, um, a good audience as well. Sometimes people won't Go to track. <laughs> I think uh, the Bulldogs here 31 performances in the top 10 from your student athletes combined on the, the women's side and the men's side uh, had a nice balance between a, a number of different events. Yes, yes. Um, I, I do the throwing events mostly, um, so that, that, that's you know what I'm focused on and, and the athletes that I'm uh, uh, definitely in contact with. Um, so we had some some really great performances. Cody Stillwell threw uh, 60 meters for the first time in the Hammer. He's number two on our all-time list right now. He's ranked sixth in the nation. Um, we had PRs in uh, men's javelin. Two kids uh, threw, gosh, uh, almost three meter PRs in those things. So it's really exciting to see things come along. We've kind of changed our training this year, moved uh, some of our weightlifting further deeper into the season, kind of sacrificed our indoor season to do that to get some of these marks. Certainly uh, had some great performances on the track as well. Uh, overall, a lot of kids uh, training throughout the year uh, in preparation uh, for the outdoor season. Yes, uh, uh, John Cook. Uh, came through and in, in won the, uh, the high jump. He was our All-American indoors in the high jump last year. And so a big adjustment going outside, you know, not just with the runners, but the field event people because you had to change your run up with, depending on what the wind is from attempt to attempt. So um, again, you know, it, it's a coping mechanism as well. As a, as a coach of the throws, how does it change going from the indoor uh, events to the outdoor events? A little different uh, events right there and, yeah. and certainly a different training. Well, we add two more events and we change one of them. Uh, the indoor weight turns into the hammer, so it's, uh, it goes a little lighter, goes a little further, but uh, it's also further away from us. There's a lot of torque on that. We add the javelin outdoors. We add the, um, um, oh, <laughs> discus. Add the discus outdoors as well. I can't throw that indoors. Uh, so the long throws uh, uh, move along. 
Um, so we, we did a good job this year of training them indoors into nets and stuff like that. But, you know, getting out there and seeing it fly is what, is what kind of makes you tweak some things. As you uh, look ahead uh, here uh, coming up over the next couple weeks, uh, what are some meets that uh, the Bulldogs will be preparing for as you get ready for those GLIAC championships? We're going to take a small group to Bucknell this, this uh, weekend here over, uh, over the break that we get. Um, probably 8 to 12 people. Uh, some of our, our more highlighted people give them a chance to compete at a, a little bit uh, different level. After that, we have a, uh, a big meet at uh, Grand Valley. It's a two-day meet. Um, then, you know, uh, kind of a, prepare, a preparatory meet and then into the GLIAC championships. GLIAC championships uh, being hosted by Grand Valley State this year. What are, what are some goals uh, for the team as you get ready for those GLIAC championships? Well, you're always trying to, you know, the most basic is to place higher than you were ranked, even if it doesn't make the finals. You know, you want to try to, to keep moving up, the, up the, uh, the pay scale there as far as that goes. Um, you know, we have some people that, that have a chance of, of, of doing some big things and scoring, and if, if, if they can stay the course on, and follow the training patterns and stuff and, and listen to their bodies and not get hurt, we should do well. How uh, difficult is it here early in the year uh, when, you, when you're not only combating uh, moving outside but uh, battling some of the weather conditions uh, to, to get enough work in to prepare for these events? Yeah, it's, uh, it's difficult because, uh, you know, some events, yeah, you can slog through the, the, the weather, but it's kind of hard to throw the javelin on wet grass. <laughs> so, um, again, we'll move them indoors if we have to or, or switch our days around that we're doing specific things and, and maybe take a throws day and turn it into a jumping um, plyometric day and then you know, flip it over and try to, make it, try to make it work for that week. I know uh, track cross country, obviously, a lot of the cross country kids move on into track season. Uh, talk about the training for some of the track kids uh, in the field events. Uh, they don't have that fall season maybe uh, to, to compete like uh, some of the distance right, kids do. Right, right. We do have a, uh, uh, like a general training season that lasts up until October, and then we break out into our event groups. We try to stay out as long as possible to do the outdoor events. Then when it gets shut down, we have to come inside, then we concentrate on the indoor events. Um, we do have uh, access to the facility to, to do some of the outdoor events inside into nets for safety and, and stuff like that, but that's still a little, you know, it, it's just not the same. So, In terms of the throwing events, obviously uh, you mentioned Cody Stillwell earlier. Talk about the progress some of those kids have made uh, since they came in and, and to where they're at right now. Well, we've been really lucky to get good athletes coming in here. Um, you know, some of them weren't necessarily going to be highly recruited, but they came in and they were good athletes. They got help from older kids. And uh, one thing I've seen this year that, that's made a big difference is uh, the training maturity of the kids we have is at a little younger level. So, you know, we got, you know, uh, sophomores and juniors that are training at uh, a level that a uh, uh, higher competitive athlete would be able to do. And then the, the younger kids will listen to them. They'll reiterate some of the things that we've been talking about or some things that we've done in training. So basically they got three coaches, you know, on some of those guys, you know, uh, and, and especially like in the javelin where uh, um, we got a transfer student in Gunner um, and he's worked with our freshmen a lot, uh, you know, as much as I have over the last uh, six or eight weeks trying to get them into that new event that they don't have in high school. Well, Coach, uh, congratulations again on a great weekend, the Bulldog Invitational, and uh, Appreciate it. best of luck to the Bulldogs here in the weeks to come. Thank you very much. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.